Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Network Admin Life. Um, grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and uh, all the saints here in, well, so yeah, it's sunny today, sunny Central California. Um, I gotta tell you, this is the, the second time I've made this video. Um, I made this video yesterday and uh, didn't really look at it. I uploaded it, scheduled it on YouTube, and um, then we got into some, some network issues yesterday that I had to attend to. And I just got around to watching that video this morning, and it was painful. The top of my head was cut off, I was stuttering a lot, and that was Monday, it was, it was Monday and I was tired, so basically. So we're doing this all over again, so lucky you, and lucky me. So uh, what this video is about is um, serial cables and consoling consoling into a switch and uh, somebody made a comment on the um, on one of my previous videos you know that they hadn't done that and I thought well, I thought everybody's done that doesn't everybody know how to do that and then I thought why should everybody know how to do that no nope. I mean most most people you know you got to start somewhere right so um, there is a point in time in your network admin career where you've never done that so there has to be a first time so I'm going to talk a little bit about what you have to do to console into a, a switch or a router. Um, usually, you, there's really only two times you do that, is initial setup or troubleshooting when you can't reach it by other means. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the serial cables first. So what type of serial cable should you use? <laughs> Yeah, there's like uh, as many different serial cables as there are devices. So, for instance, on my older legacy switches, I don't know if you can see them, they're black, they're over there. We use this type of cable. It's um, you know, nine pin to nine pin. And one end goes to your laptop, one end goes to the switch. Yeah, we don't, uh, that was for that. You Cisco guys are looking at this going, uh, that wouldn't work on a Cisco. Yeah, it won't. It only works on those older legacy extreme devices. Um, the newer cables they use. Well, actually, let me let me backtrack. So that cable I just showed you, this cable, works on the 48 port legacy extreme switches. This cable here worked on the 12 port. Legacy extreme switches, so and, and the S series, the big core switches. So you have the RJ45, which plugged into a console port on the switch, and then you had the DB9 connector, which plugged into your laptop. So um, yeah, so when we went to the new purple switches, same idea, but now this connector doesn't work anymore. They have a new nine-pin connector. That you have to use to plug in and this this one isn't pin for pin compatible so now this is what you plug into most of the purple switches the console port and uh, and the newer uh, fabric switches and this is the end that plugs into your laptop this particular cable since I still have both switches out there I just keep both connectors on there and I just take off whichever one I don't really need to use so there's that type of serial cable there's all kinds of other serial cables Okay, Cisco guys, there you go. Same thing, RJ45 on one side, DB9 on the other. This will not work in an extreme switch. However, it will work in my Palo Alto firewalls. I don't have any Cisco switches, so that's the only thing I use it for, is my Palo Alto firewalls, if I have to console into them. And I usually don't. Um, there's some others. So this cable here. This uh, um, looks just like one of the extreme cables. It's not. This was from an old, um, oh shoot, what was it, riverbed. This was a riverbed serial cable. Don't have that anymore, so I don't really have to, I don't have use of that, but I, I keep it, I guess, for sentimental reasons. And then this guy right here, nine pin to nine pin. Um, this was for HP Pro Curve switches will not work on extreme switches. The DB9 cable 
the one I just showed you will not work on pro curve switches. Again, <laughs> I only keep this for sentimental reasons. I don't, I don't really use it. I don't expect to work on any pro curve switches in the future. But you never know, so I never throw anything away. And then we've got this guy. And a lot of you guys that, that already know about how all this stuff works, you're going to think you know exactly what this is. And it's not what you think it is. This is another serial cable. Um, it's it's not a USB to serial adapter like you might be thinking. It is a just dead-on serial cable. This particular company um, has some special software you have to install on your PC. You plug the USB port in, and then this works on only their serial port devices. Um, and it will not work to be a USB to serial adapter for anything else. So, it's, uh, I believe it's a, some weird medical device. So you've got the, the you got your cable, and uh, here I'm going to use this guy right here. I don't need the legacy port portion, so I'll take that off. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use this one because it's already it's already unwound. I don't have to wind it back up. So. I've got, I've got my my RJ45 end. It's going to plug into. It's kind of hard to see. Let me move it down here a little bit. Get these out of the way. Oh, <laughs> while we're on extreme, so you saw this. This had had an end that snaps in. They also make a cable that's just hardware, nine pin to RJ45. Exact same thing. Um, I'm not going to use that. So what you do here? Let me let me come and grab this and give you a closer look. So you got the switch here. This one's already on. And you know what? I am gonna unplug it just for demo purposes later. So RJ46 end of the serial cable. Hang on, I'm trying to work one-handed here. Here we go. This is gonna plug in somewhere. Where does it plug in? Well, they got a, They always have a dedicated port just for it. So um, you'll see. Okay, well, it says consoles, top or bottom. It's in, in our case, it is the bottom port that gets the uh, th that end of the serial cable. The top port. The, so these are all Ethernet ports, right? You 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 with me so far? This one is if you have a separate management Ethernet network. Um, you can use this port for just management of the of the device. We we don't do that with our switches. Although we do that with our firewalls. The rest are all Ethernet ports. Don't do this. Don't plug your serial cable into an Ethernet port. Not going to work. Um, it shouldn't damage anything, but, you know, depends on the switch and the manufacturer and, and, and your laptop. Um, most switches will just say, I don't know what that is, and just not do anything with it. Because the, the pinouts are completely different. So plug that into your console port. Ah, there we go, so far. So, now you got to plug the other end into your laptop. Uh, where does it go? So, a lot of laptops, especially, um, you know, like older laptops, they'll, they'll, they'll have a serial port right in the side or the back or wherever. Mine doesn't have that. So, what do I need to make this work? I need... Sorry. Trying to get this all set back up right so I don't cut my head off again. I need a, a serial port adapter. So, and th this is this is what some of you are thinking. So this this plugs into a serial port, and uh, sorry, plugs into a USB port and becomes your laptop's serial port. So um, you'll plug it in. It'll ask you, you know, sometimes they come with drivers. A lot of times Windows will just find the correct driver. Uh, if you're using a Mac, then you're going to have to install the driver. Um, get the drivers installed, and it's going to come up. I'm just going to talk from PC point of view, guys. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not going to do Macs, um, even though I have Macs at home. Uh, so it's going to come up. Once the software is installed, it's going to come up and put this on a specific serial port. So in my case, I've used two different types of these, and um, or plugged it into both serial ports, and it's come up. I've got a COM3 and a COM5. So um, the way you find out is just run Device Manager, look look for COM ports in the little menu tree there, and then you'll be able to determine what if 
that's going to be on com one, two, three, four, five, what? Um, so, all that talking done. So all you do is you, you plug this guy into your USB adapter and plug that into your laptop. I'm using Grace and Ease. You get logged into the laptop here. Pardon my back. So, I'll bring you up now. Get on your laptop here, and what you're going to want to um, you're going to want to download some sort of terminal em terminal emulation software. So um, my my software of choice is Putty, but there's you know Hyper Terminal, there's TerraTerm, there's there's all kinds you can use. I like Putty because it's lightweight and it's easy. Um, you can save different sessions, and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So since I'm using a COM port, I've already saved different COM sessions for the different COM, you know, different serial port adapters I have. I know I'm going to be using COM5, so I'm going to go ahead and load COM5. There it says we're going to use COM port 5, it's serial. So, yes, so speed, speed and duplex. You're going to have to set that. Most devices, and there's a serial section here. Most devices out of the box, I say most, not all, they'll, be, they'll come up with a certain speed, um, speed and duplex is what you'll hear a lot. Um, the data bits is, is almost universally standardized at one, or at uh, eight, and the stop bits at one, almost universal. Um, you haven't seen seven, seven data bits since the modem days. Um, but what is not standardized normally is the speed. So I, I have de devices that connect at 9600 baud. I have devices that connect at 5600 baud or 56, 57,006. What's the top end? I can't remember. Um, oh here, let me let me. I'll show you. So that one's 96, right? So I have a series of um, uh, switches that connect at a much higher speed. So yeah, we'll just take this one as an example. There you go. See, that speed's a lot higher. <laughs> 115,200 baud. But, uh, you know, that's, that's the exception. That's the only other time I've run into that. Um, most of the time, they're going to connect at 9600, 8. 8 data bits, no parity bit, 1 stop bit. So, got that set up. I've got that loaded and Putty's sitting here waiting to do something. Um, let me move this up so we can see it. There we go. So, got the console cable on the laptop. I got my terminal emulation software running. Now, the only thing is to power this guy up. And we'll see if my settings worked. Hey, I see words. So if you see something come up when you power up your device, then you're in good shape. It's it. You've probably got it set right. We'll go ahead and let it continue um, booting up, and then we will uh, do the last check, which is to make sure that it responds to the keystrokes, because if it doesn't, you may have a, a little more configuring to do. You may have to check in the manual to see if there's a a serial setting you missed because all of this stuff will be in the in the you know in the manual how, how to set up what what the you know speed speed and duplex are and if there's any special keyboard settings hopefully they'll they'll denote that in the manual as well so yeah after it boots up you'll see lots and lots of uh, informational messages luckily these things don't take too incredibly long to boot up Okay, it says pending AAA, which means there's still one service that's got to start up. That service is now started, so we can try to log in. Um, but you'll see that it doesn't say anything there. So that's what you got to do. You um, you got to usually you have to hit the enter key a couple times to to tell the switch. You know it'll it'll sense what speed and duplex are being used and 
and uh, that it's got a terminal connected to it now. And just to make sure that uh, everything is completely set up right, just try to type something and try to log in. And yep, it's responding. So we got it set up right. Man, aren't, aren't we clever? So hang on, let me put you back over here so I can uh, start talking again. There you go. Uh, there. How about right about there? A little crooked, but uh, that's all right. That's all right. So there, that's that's pretty much it. You know, now you console in, you're gonna use the either the credentials you've set up or the um, the default credentials. Which I'm not gonna tell you what they are. You can probably Google that and figure it out. And by the way, when you're setting up a switch, that's like the first thing you do is change the default password. <laughs> Get rid of that. Create a new admin password. Something hard to guess. Um, so yeah, now from here you can log in and start configuring or start troubleshooting. So, you know, serial cable is just one way to actually console into this. I mean, that, that is the way you console into the switch. But, uh, you know, with PuTTY or any of the terminal emulation software, you don't always have to have a serial cable. Um, you can just put in the IP address of the switch and connect to it that way. Um, that's the way I'm going to be doing it 99.9% .9 of the time. Again, usually the only time I'm consoling in is when initial setup or when there's been a problem and we've lost communication to the switch and you have to take the walk of shame, go out to the closet, plug the console cable in. Um, so that's why you want to be careful making changes remotely because then otherwise you lose connection to the switch. If you do something dumb, <laughs> you got to walk out there, console in, and undo whatever you did. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it. You know, uh, I know a lot of the, the pros out there are going to say, well, wait, he didn't talk about this or that. Yeah, probably I might have forgot something. Put it in the comments below. Let me know what I forgot. I am an old guy, so I forget things, um, and I don't. But I don't want to forget this. So um, new, new this week is um, prayer requests. Now I know there's there's a lot of atheists out there. There's a lot of people of other faiths out there. That's fine. But uh, come on, you, what's what's somebody praying for you gonna hurt? So I'd like to, to add a little segment here of uh, any prayer requests you might have. Um, something you might want me to lift up to to the Lord in, in your name. Um, problems, you know, looking for a job or trouble with a job or about to lose a job. Because I've been in all those places. Um, trouble with family, uh, definitely been there. So, um, yeah, that's that's a good thing about uh, about God. He's, he's always present. He's always with us even when we, when we don't feel it. He's always working and we, even when we don't see it. So, yeah. Um, be happy to, to pray for anybody who needs it or with anybody who needs it so all right guys that's all i got for this week um go out there and uh make it a good week go out there and live for god we'll catch you guys later god bless and now i turn it off oh hit subscribe and like if you want if you don't don't worry about it all right let's see where's the button where is it where is it there it is